All right, so now on to example number two, evaluate the six trigonometric functions. And this one looks a little different um, because I was just kind of catching along when I was given a triangle. I kind of remembered sine, cosine, tangent, but now I'm giving them sine and tangent is a ratio. And how am I going to evaluate the six just from that one ratio? But again, that we have to remember is the tangent of theta, right, is basically that relationship of opposite over adjacent. So let's kind of break this down from what we know right now. We know that this really means how big is the opposite side over the hypot I'm sorry, opposite over the adjacent side, right? So basically, of some triangle, I don't know why I'm having trouble here, of some triangle written somewhere, it has an opposite side of four and an adjacent side of three, right? That's what the tangent of that angle is theta saying. So my question to you is, well, why don't we draw what that triangle, why don't we draw the triangle that this information came from, right? Do we know what the triangle looks like? No, not exactly, but we don't really need to. We just need to have an idea of what that triangle looks like. So let's go ahead and draw a triangle, right triangle, right? Because the trigonometric functions only come from right triangles. All right, so let's say here's theta, and let's call this theta, or I'm sorry, there's your right triangle. This is theta. All right, so if that's theta and that's the right triangle, that means here is my hypotenuse. That means this has to be my opposite side, and this has to be my adjacent side, right? So of this triangle, here's, you know, we're just plopping this down here, um, and now we just label the, uh, given an angle, a right, a right angle, and now we just label the opposite hypotenuse and adjacent. So now let's plug in the information we know, right? We know that tangent of theta is 4 thirds, then we know the opposite side is 4, so that means that's 4, and we know the adjacent side is 3, so that means that's 3. Well, do we have enough information now to at least find the hypotenuse? Yeah, of course. Now, hopefully you can recognize this is a perfect, a triangle, or sorry, a Pythagorean triple. If not, that's okay. Just use the Pythagorean theorem to solve for this. So let's do three squared plus four squared equals, let's call it C squared. Three squared is nine plus 16 equals C squared. So therefore it's 25 is equal to C squared. And what you can recognize here then is C is equal to five. So we, based on this information, we have now figured out all the sides of the triangle. So based on given this, we have now found all the sides of the triangle. Now we can evaluate for sine, cosine, and tangent, right? And thankfully there's no, um, thankfully here there is no, uh, there's no radicals or anything like that. So we can do this relatively simple, uh, easy. So the sine, of theta is opposite over hypotenuse. Oh, I hate my fours. So that's going to be four over five. The cosine of theta is adjacent over hypotenuse. And the tangent is already given to us. So I like that. I can solve that pretty easily. That's equal to four thirds. All right. Now, if we're going to do our reciprocal functions, it's just going to be the reciprocal of all these. So not really much math is going to be needed here. It's just going to, you know, flip them. 5 over 4, uh, the secant of theta. I don't know why I'm doing that. That's equal to 5 thirds. And the cotangent of theta is equal to 3 fourths. Okay, so boom. Done. Um, now let's do cosine. So again, what does cosine represent? The cosine of an angle represents the adjacent side over the hypotenuse. So again, we have another triangle, right? We don't know exactly what the triangle looks like, but we know that the cosine of theta equals one or fifth is some triangle representing the length of the adjacent side being one and the other length of the hypotenuse being five. Okay, so again, it's a comparison. So let's just draw a triangle that represents that information. So I'll just draw another triangle very similar to the one I just had, because I like to keep things simple. Let's call this theta. So therefore, again, that's the hypotenuse. This will be the opposite side. And then this will be the adjacent side. Okay, so again, if I know my adjacent side is one, my hypotenuse is five, now let's figure out what this opposite side is. So again, I'm gonna have to use Pythagorean theorem here because we don't know what this side is. So let's call this B. So we'll have one squared plus B squared equals five squared. Ah, finally, some radicals. Um, one squared is just one. So therefore I'll have one plus B squared 
equals 25, subtract one, subtract one, b squared is equal to 25, and we got plenty of room, right? Yeah, okay. So therefore, b is equal to the square root of, oops, of 24. Let's write that, my bad. 25 minus one is 24. So b, b is equal to the square root, after you take the square root of both sides, um, so b squared is equal to 20, it's 24, you take the square root of both sides, b is equal to the square root of 24. But we can simplify that, right? And again, this comes up a lot, okay? So I'll do my little explanation here if you've missed this before. So we can take the square root of one, which is equal to one. We can take the square root of four, which is equal to two. We can take the square root of nine, which is equal to three. We can even take the square root of 16, which is equal to four. Right? And let's, I guess, move to the next one. We can take the square root of 25, which is equal to 5. The problem is, we cannot take the square root of 24, at least use it to find, to give it an integer. All right? But what we can do is we can take the square root of 1, 4, 9, 16, 25, and obviously the list goes on and on, right? But what we want to do, if we want to simplify this, we want to rewrite this in terms of numbers we can take the square root of. So we got to think, what of these numbers, besides 1, because 1 obviously divides into every number, which of these numbers, 4, 9, 16, 25, divide into 24? And the answer is 4. So what I can do is I can rewrite this as the square root of 4 times 6. Okay? And then we just need to use our understanding of our product of radicals, that the product of radicals basically states, and let's do this in red, Product of radicals states if you have a times b under a radical, that is the same thing as the square root of a times the square root of b. So what that means is I can break this up here into the square root of 4. So let's do, so b is equal to the square root of 4 times the square root of 6, which is equal to 2 square root of 6. Whoa. Okay, so I'm going to put that in parentheses, 2 radical 6. Okay, so now let's go and fit in our sine, cosine, and tangent. So a little bit of work, I'm going to do this once, I'm not going to explain that really again. Because, um, you know, obviously it's something that we should know, I just wanted to review it. So the sine here is opposite over hypotenuse, so therefore that's going to be 2 radical 6 over 5. Nothing really I can do there, um, or to simplify that. Cosine of theta is going to be adjacent over my hypotenuse. So that's going to equal 1 over 5. And then I have my tangent of theta. And that's going to be my opposite over adjacent. Obviously, guys, anything over 1 is just going to be um, anything. So that would be 2 over radical 6. Now let's get into the reciprocals. So if I have cosecant of theta, Crap, I'm going to have a radical in the denominator, but that's okay. We've kind of practiced this already. 5 divided by 2, radical 6. I don't know when I'm going to stop changing the color and showing you guys how to rationalize the denominator, but it's going to happen relatively soon. Um, but it's, you know, it takes a little practice here to get used to this. So this becomes 5, radical 5, because you can't multiply a number outside of a radical inside of a number. You can multiply, again, going back to our rules, a times b. If, if the square root of a times b is equal to the square root of a times square root of b, that means the square root of 6 times the square root of 5 is equal to the square root of 30. So therefore, that becomes 2 square root of 30. Okay? And then, now this kind of brings up this point. Well, we can simplify this a little bit further, right? Um, and again, we think about this. Like, do any of these numbers divide into 30 to simplify that radical? And unfortunately, no, none of them do. However, the same rule works like this. If I have a over b, or a divided by b, square root, that is equal to the square root of a divided by the square root of b. So what that means is I can rewrite this under one radical, and I'm going to be imposing on this other one, but let's just write it in there. So we can rewrite this as 5 halves times the square root of 5 over 30 which is really just going to be the, this reduces down to one, ah, let's not write it like that way. Yeah, that's fine. Which can be rewritten as one sixth, right? Five over 30, re divide the top and bottom by five. So therefore that can be written as five halves 
times 1 over 6, which also can be written as 5 times the square root of 1 is just 1, over 2, radical 6. Jeez, oh man, why am I doing this to myself? Why don't I just, nah, I don't want to do that. Radical 6, and then you'd have to rationalize the denominator again. What am I doing? I don't know. I'm like making this way more complicated than I need to. Um, oh, no wonder. Stupid mistake. Uh, delete. <laughs> Look at all this. I'm not multiplying by the square root of 5. Okay, so I have this. No wonder. I was like, this is really a lot harder than, I, than it looked. Um, so I got to get rid of the 6 off the bottom. So I'm going to multiply by a radical 6 on the top and the bottom. And therefore, now what I'll have is the square root of, oops, sorry, is going to be 5 times the square root of 6 over square root of 6 times square root of 6, again, right, is going to equal the square root of 36, which is just 6. 6 times 2 is 12. Okay, moving on. Uh, secant is going to be the reciprocal of cosine, which is 5 over 1, which is really easy because it's 5. And then the cotangent is going to be the reciprocal of 2 over square root of 6. So that's going to be 1 over 2 radical 6. And again, we're going to want to rationalize the denominator here. So multiply by the square root of 6 on the top and the bottom. And again, we'll get the square root of 6 over square root of 6 times square root of 6 is 6 times 2, which is 12. All right, on to the last one. Now this one, it's not giving us a trigonometric, a, a initial trigonometric, it's giving us the reciprocal trigonometric function, which is cosecant. So we gotta remember cosecant, again, is the reciprocal of sine. Again, sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So then this is hypotenuse over opposite. Okay, but again, Remember, this cosecant is a ratio. It's a comparison. We are comparing the, the size of the hypotenuse compared to the size of the opposite of some triangle. So let's create some triangle to compare this with. Okay, so let's just call theta here. Let's keep it, nor let's keep it simple. Here's the adjacent side. Here's the hypotenuse. Here's the opposite. Do we always have to use theta? Do we always have to use the same triangle? No, like it's gonna, you can use whatever triangle and Greek symbol or variable you want to. Um, but I like using this triangle, it's very typical. Uh, but remember, it's not dependent on that. Like it's dependent on, you know, what the, uh, how, where you, you put the angle. Um, so again, we have the hypotenuse is going to be uh, two radical three and the opposite side is going to be 3. Okay, so again, we need to use Pythagorean theorem. Here's our two legs. So let's call this A. Call that A for adjacent. So I'll have A squared plus 3 squared equals 2 radical 3 squared. Hmm, interesting on this one. So A squared equals 9. <laughs> A plus equals 1 a squared plus 9 is equal to 2 radical 3 squared. Now again, what does just 2 radical 3 squared even mean? That just means 2 radical 3 times 2 radical 3, right? Well, we can't multiply a number outside of radical inside of the radical, so we just do 2 times 2, which is 4. And then remember, we can multiply radicals as long as they have the same index. So this a times b is just going to be radical. So square root of 3 times square root of 3 is just going to be square root of 9, which is 3. So therefore, this is equal to 12. Then I'll subtract a 9. Subtract a 9. a squared is equal to 3. Therefore, a is equal to the square root of 3. Cool. All right. Now, since I kind of encroached here over this, um, let's go and just use a different color. Let's use blue. And I'll kind of draw a line here so I don't, hopefully I won't need all that space. So let's do the sine of theta is opposite over adjacent. Nice and easy. Oh, dang it, I have a radical. 2 divided by 2 squared of 3. Um, so I'll rationalize the denominator. I think after this, I think after this first lesson, I'm going to stop writing <laughs> the radicals every single time because it's just redundant. 3 square root of 3, and this becomes 3 times 3, which is 3. Um, or sorry, which is yeah, 3 times 2, which is 6. 
And then you guys can see that that reduces to square root of three over two. Hmm, interesting, I like that number. Let's do cosine. Cosine of theta is going to be my adjacent side, which I didn't write, square root of three. So that's gonna be my adjacent side over my hypotenuse. So that's gonna be square root of three over two square root of three. Well, here you can see that the square root of threes are the same, so they're just gonna divide out, leave me with one half. And let's do the tangent of theta. Hopefully I don't have much simplifying because I don't have much room. Tangent of theta is going to be opposite over adjacent. So that's going to be three over radical three. Rationalize the denominator. And that's gonna give me three radical three over three. Those divide out, just give me radical three. All right, it's cosecant. Okay, cosecant is gonna be the reciprocal. I'm just gonna reciprocate this. I'm not gonna reciprocate that. So the cosecant here is going to be two radical three over three. Uh, for my secant, that got reduced to one half, so I'm just gonna reciprocate that, two over one. And then the cotangent of theta, rather than reciprocating that, I'm just gonna reciprocate that, and that's going to equal the square root of three over three. So, whew, there we go, ladies and gentlemen. Um, that is how you do it. Uh, evaluate the six trigonometric functions when you're given a ratio. And again, the main thing that I can just, you know, express to you is remember trigonometric assumptions mean something. They are a ratio. They are a comparison of lengths. So if you're given a trigonometric ratio, um, especially in fractional form, you, you can just relate them to a triangle and just draw a random generic triangle and then plot those values in there. And then once you, as long as you have two sides and a missing side, you can use Pythagorean theorem to find the third side. As long as you have a right triangle, an angle, that an angle of that triangle, um, then you can evaluate this and all three sides, you can evaluate the six trigonometric functions. So now what we're gonna do is get onto some special relationships of right triangles that um, are gonna be very, very helpful for us as far as speed. You can see we did this and it wasn't too bad. And the more and more practice you do on this, I mean, I'm showing some work because I'm teaching, but you know, the faster you get, the more examples you do with these, you start getting a little bit quicker. But now what we're gonna move on to is our special triangles relationships, which is going to make everything go by much, much faster. So let's go and work on that.